It is the end of the year. It is the last pay-per-view of the year. And WWE is pretty much in cruise control at this point. As am I. What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and this is my TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs predictions video for 2020. Let me know who you think is going to win down in the comments below. We have six announced matches as of Saturday morning. Currently, nothing for the kick, nothing for the kickoff, but, you know, that is what it is on a Saturday morning. So, of those six matches, let's get into what could happen this Sunday on TLC. Number one, the... New Day defending their Raw Tag Team titles again versus the Hurt Business. And that is Shelton Benjamin and Wow. And Cedric Alexander one more time going for those Tag Team titles. And I think this time perhaps just maybe they get the job done. Because honestly I don't know what else changes hands on this show. If any belt is going to be most likely to change hands. It's going to be those Raw Tag Team titles. So yeah, I'll give that to the Hurt Business, considering Lashley not booked on the show. So Lashley, you would imagine, is going to be ringside. MVP for sure going to be ringside, unless they had to tell you, all right, they're banned from ringside or something nonsense like that. But generally, Hurt Business going to be ringside. But, 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 also not booked on the show, Big E. And it's a cross-branded thing, so Big E could be ringside, but that's still four on three. And I say Hurt Business gets it done and wins those titles. All the gold on them boys. They doing it. So, elsewhere in the tag team realm, we have your women's tag team champions. That is Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus the Raw women's champion, Asuka. And question mark because Lana was taken out from this equation Lana is not Asuka's tag team partner in this tag team title match which is not somehow a tables match when it could have been should have been would have been because Lana went through nine tables and this is not a tables match you guys how is that not the smartest booking in the world you didn't do that how 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 anyhow now certainly you could go the route of having Lana appear even though she isn't medically cleared as the ultimate underdog and still gets involved in this match because she just wants it that badly. That could happen. Alternately, even though they teased like a Mandy Rose who just came back or Dana Brooke, come on. If you're going to have a mystery tag team partner and you're going to build towards Asuka's next challenger... It makes all the sense in the world for it to be the Queen, Charlotte. So, the return of Charlotte, they win those tag team titles, right? And then you build towards the turn and the split, and you build towards Asuka and Charlotte at WrestleMania. That, to me, would be the most prudent thing to do if you're going to bring back the Queen for this match, right? Because then you can build towards, oh my god, can Asuka beat Charlotte at Mania? That was her first loss. So that makes all the sense in the world to me. But again, plans could change between now and then. So if it's Lana, I still think they lose. If it's Charlotte, I think they win. But it's a question mark, so hard to call at this juncture. Now, elsewhere with the ladies, we have the blueprints, the standard. Sasha Banks defending and now she has de defended more than once successfully that happened first time in history right defending that Smackdown women's title against Carmella who I guess her whole thing now is that she likes to drink champagne that's her whole gimmick okay I guess fine sure I don't see Sasha losing here I think Sasha retains I'm not sure who she eventually loses to but I don't think it's going to be Carmella. Could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. I just don't see that happening here. And oh my god, Kofi Kingston is here. But it's not fast enough, Kofi. You didn't get there enough. Roman Reigns gets the victory. Sorry, Kofi. You should have been here a second sooner. What are you going to do? And still, now then, the only non-title match on this six-match announced card is going to be 
The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, versus The Viper, Randy Orton, in a Firefly Inferno match. And I have no idea what that's going to look like, or be. I, like, legit, again, they're, they're having things announced, much like the House of Horrors match, without actually thinking of what the match is going to be before they announce the match itself. They have the name first and go, oh, all right, we'll figure it out later. So that one, is it a typical Inferno match? Is it going to be an Inferno match taking place inside the Funhouse? Like, what does that mean? We've seen a, a Firefly Funhouse match. It was cinematic. It wasn't a match, per se, with The Fiend and John Cena at Mania. So is it that? Is it a totally cinematic experience? We just don't know. So I'm going to say that The Fiend wins this match. Because I don't know how else to call it. And if it's a Firefly Funhouse style match, that is The Fiend's thing. That's his whole gimmick. So of course he'd win that match against Randy Orton. But look, I don't know how to call it. I don't know what it is. That's just, you know, unusual. So, moving on to this matchup. The Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. Versus the phenomenal AJ Styles, TLC, for the WWE title with Omos at ringside. And I still don't see Drew losing this belt. He got it back from Randy. I don't see AJ doing it. But AJ is a credible contender. And it should be a phenomenal match. No pun intended. But again, I don't see Drew losing here. And maybe at some point you get Brock back for Drew. But, like, I'm curious... We're still too early to have built up Keith Lee at that level. But eventually, I would hope for a Keith Lee title reign on Raw. We'll see. We'll see. So, on the flip side, on the SmackDown side... There goes Drew. On, on SmackDown, we have your champion, Roman Reigns. And here it is, AJ just getting the belt here. Roman Reigns uh, is going to face off against Kevin Owens... For that universal title. Wow, AJ, you're bad at this. You had all the time in the world, and you... Alright, that was just... This game's bad, you guys. That's not news that this game is terrible, but hey, it's still terrible a year later. Still bad. Still bad. So yes, Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, TLC, Universal Championship, and much like Drew, I don't see Roman losing. The whole thing with Roman is that... They didn't want Lars on the show to be this guy you, that you couldn't beat. Because Roman is the guy that you can't beat. And you, and you can't have two, I guess, for some reason. Because then, if you have two, eventually, they're going to want to see him fight. And I don't want to see Lars and Roman. Nobody wants that, right? So, Roman Reigns continues to be the dominant head of the table tribal chief on SmackDown. And maybe eventually, you hit a big E to challenge Roman Reigns at that point. But we're not there just yet. It's the end of the year. You're spinning your wheels, and you're just going through the motions to make it towards 2021 and the Royal Rumble. So we'll get there when we get there. But I'm a tax slug. More videos right here on this channel. More whatever. It's the end of the year, and I'm just burned out. So here we go. More videos. Tune in. I'll see you next time right here, and I'm out.